I like to think of wavetable synthesis as like creating oscillators out of samples. So we have a long section of audio and we're creating an oscillator out of looping or oscillating a small little section of that audio. And as you may know, if you loop a small section of audio fast enough, then it generates a tone. And this is essentially how synthesis is working in this case. So wavetable synthesis is really just subtractive synthesis, but the oscillator section is slightly different. So we have wavetables instead of waveforms. You know, where waveforms are static, you know, you choose one or the other, like a saw or a square, wavetables are dynamic. We have our long sample or section of audio and we're essentially scrolling through it. And as we move through that sample, the sound that's being generated from that oscillator changes as well and we end up with a whole bunch of really interesting and textural tones. So that's it. Wavetable synthesis is just subtractive synthesis, but the oscillator section is different. Okay, so I'm in Serum now, and this is our waveform, a sine wave like we're used to, and I can actually use this wavetable position knob, and that's gonna change the waveform. And so how this is working, if I click on it, we go into the 3D view, and I can just scroll through the actual wavetable itself. So you can hear when I play a few notes, As I change through the wavetable, we're gonna get different textures. So again, we have a whole bunch of these different wavetables in here. We've got a lot of different types. And just having access to this wavetable position knob gives us a whole bunch of new possibilities. So I can go grab this LFO1 over here and just map it to the wavetable position. And once I hold some notes down, you'll hear that it'll change and morph which is a really cool thing because now we have a lot of creative flexibility and freedom. Oscillator B here is actually layered with another wavetable, a different type. It's more of a saw wave and it's just quickly modulating. So this gives us that constant movement, whereas this one is moving slowly over time. By the way, if you're looking for some nice serum presets, then I also left a link in the description to where you can get our free EDM essentials pack. So now we understand more of the use of wavetable synthesis, I wanna sort of take it back a step and talk a little bit more about how it works. So I mentioned at the start of the video that wavetable is kind of like scrolling through a long section of audio. Uh, I've got this wavetable here and let's see the wavetable position. It sort of morphs between a sine wave, triangle, square, uh, saw, and then a triangle again, and then a square again. So what I'm gonna do is go to LFO1 and make it kind of like a ramp shape. And I'm gonna put the rate onto one bar. I'm also gonna make a one bar MIDI clip. I'm gonna put it at C1 over here. And then I'm gonna get LFO1 to modulate the wavetable position. So like over the course of one bar, it's gonna scroll through the whole wavetable. Something like this. And then I'm simply gonna freeze and flatten this track and drag the audio onto this MIDI track that I have here. So that's gonna put that into a sampler device. And if we zoom in, you can actually see the waveforms that we had in the wavetable. So we started off with a sine wave, which turned into a triangle wave, and then it sort of morphed into a square wave over here, and then it went to a saw wave over, over this side, and then it sort of went back to a square, I believe. No, it went back to a triangle. So you can see that whole wavetable is captured in this audio sample. And essentially what wavetable synthesis is doing is it's chopping each one of these audio samples into its individual cycles. So, so I'm gonna go from here and do one full cycle over there. I'm gonna loop this and this is the sine wave that we started with. And just try and get one cycle of this square wave. This is what we had for the square wave, right? So I'm just gonna go back to Serum to compare here. I've pulled up this wavetable and it's the same wavetable as before and I'm gonna select, and we're, we're selecting our wave form. But again, remember that this is just an audio loop. This is just a, a loop like, like this one that we have here. So this is just a, a, a morphing audio loop and we're choosing particular cycles of our audio. So we have this square wave form cycle over here and I'm gonna play that for you now. And I'm gonna go over to Serum here to compare it. So let's play a C1 in the square wave over here as well. That's pretty similar.
So again, just to drive this point home, moving the wavetable position is essentially moving the loop over here or scrolling through the loop and uh, finding a different cycle within the loop. So this means that when it comes to designing your own wavetables, it's pretty straightforward because all you need to do is design a section of audio that we want to use as a wavetable. And then in Serum, I can simply just drag in an audio clip and use that as my wavetable. So let's have a go at designing our own wavetable and see what happens. Again, I'm just going to make a C1 over here, just one bar long. I'm going to pull up Serum and just do some sort of basic modulation stuff. So maybe, maybe we could do some FM stuff with a sine wave. So I'm going to start off with my sine wave over here. And I'm also going to grab maybe another sine wave over here. I'm going to use the warp mode down here and go to FM from B. And then I'm just going to simply over the course of one bar, uh, one bar here, I get this LFO to modulate this sound. So that's what we've got so far. Maybe I can just pull this back. So maybe I could also get this LFO to modulate the wavetable position just ever so slightly. So we're starting to get some more bright sounds as it gets to the end of the loop. Uh, I could even put some effects and sort of modulate some distortion over here. So maybe the drive amount, let's just modulate that one. Turn the mix down. And again, I'm simply going to freeze and then flatten this. Let's flatten this track. And if I zoom in, you get a little preview of what the, the waveform is gonna look like as we scroll across. So you can see it starts off as like a sine wave and as we move across, these harmonics get more and more complex uh, and more distorted over here. So to turn this into our wavetable, first I'm gonna sort of just turn it up, see how much volume I can get out of it without clipping. And I'm also going to consolidate this. And then I'm just gonna grab my sample and drag it into Serum and choose one of these top three. So the first frame is a little bit clipped off, but as I move the knob, you can see it becomes a sine wave. Uh, it starts off as a sine wave, and then as I move the wavetable position up, it gets more distorted and we have more harmonics being introduced. So if I'm to play through it, it sounds like this. So as you can see with Serum, making your own wavetables is really fun and easy to do. Uh, what you can also do is sort of just experiment with making wavetables out of literally anything. You could try using your voice. That's a really interesting technique. I've had some pretty good results with warping things like one shot drum sounds as well. So. Uh, maybe let's try warping some sort of snare sample. Maybe I'm going to turn the warp mode to texture. I'm just gonna hold shift and drag this out and see what tones we can get from this. So I'm gonna hit Command J here to consolidate. We can see sort of what the waveform is gonna look like, really crazy and distorted. And I'm just gonna see the result of what happens when I drag this one in. So I'm just gonna grab this sample and just drag it in and I'm gonna use constant frame size again. And this is sort of our really crazy, wacky waveform. So you can see that this is uh, really complex and crazy. So this is a really cool way to get a sort of metallic tone because we have so much harmonics here. That's a really cool tone. I really like that one. So one of the really nice features of Serum is it has a really cool wavetable editor. So. What I'm gonna do is actually hit this little uh, pencil icon here and this brings up the wavetable editor. And I'm gonna show you a few things about how this works. First of all, process. Process is the whole wavetable. Single just uh, refers to the single frame that you're using. We can actually draw lines in here uh, of what we want the waveform for each frame to look like. I can select frames and delete them. So what I'm gonna do is go to this frame and then sort of go to maybe uh, maybe this one here, highlight all of those, go to add and remove, remove multi-selection and all of those frames are removed. You can also just hit the minus button if you wanna remove frames. You can click on frames. So what I'm gonna do is sort of just choose a few frames and then just morph between them. Maybe I'm gonna delete all of these ones, add and remove multi-selection and remove these ones. So now we have these five frames here. And I'm gonna highlight all of these, go into process and remove the DC offset. I'm also going to X fade the edges so they link up together. And then this tab here allows us to morph between all of the five wavetables that we have. 
So I'm going to try spectral morphing and see what that does. And now you can see that as I move this wavetable position, it's gonna morph between those five wavetables that I selected. So let's have a look here. So it's a really cool way of creating your own wavetables. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There's so much different experimentation and stuff you can do it. You can resample wavetables and we can really just dive into the rabbit hole of wavetable design if we like. So all I really wanted to get out of this video was just to encourage you to experiment with wavetable synthesis. Uh, it's really not as complex as it might seem and it's simply just regular subtractive synthesis with a different oscillator section. So once we know basic synthesis principles, wavetable becomes really fun because we can just experiment around with creating our own wave table. So I hope you've learned something. If you've enjoyed the video today, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.